Hello, I'm Dr. Nathan Way, and I'm a board-certified rheumatologist and expert in regenerative medicine, particularly when it comes to osteoarthritis. The next series of videos will focus on stem cells and arthritis treatment. The first thing I'm going to do is describe the guided mesenchymal stem cell layering technique. That's our proprietary method. So let, let's talk about stem cells and arthritis treatment. If you have osteoarthritis and are looking for an alternative to joint replacement, you might want to listen up. Well, does this work? Does step, do stem cells really work? Rather than me tell you, why not have someone else tell you? This is the story of Greg Keener. Well, it's nice to be here um, in Maryland. I'm from Michigan. And uh, it's been uh, very interesting and informative uh, hearing all the speakers here today. Uh, uh, we've heard from specialists and experts and doctors and and entertainers and legends and uh, and I'm none of the above um, I'm here to uh, give a patient's perspective um, I underwent a uh, stem cell procedure with Dr. Wee uh, in December of 2010 um, how I came to that is uh, I've always had a, uh, a passion for running and uh, it's, it's something that uh, gets my motor running and uh, you know a lot of these people are uh, uh, outstanding in their field of expertise uh, that have been here uh, today uh, I'm more uh, inclined to be out running in the field <laughs> so uh, uh, my story is uh, basically that uh, um, I love to run but uh, my my uh, I didn't get to pick my parents and uh, my mother uh, had had uh, two total knee replacements uh, before she was my age and uh, my father I inherited a little bit of, uh, of uh, bow-leggedness from him so that kind of puts uh, pressure on the knee joints too and uh, so as a result uh, I experienced knee problems uh, beginning probably 20 years ago and uh, they initially began with uh, uh, trauma injuries both both knees. Uh, one time I fell off of a boat and uh, landed on a swim platform and tore, the, tore my meniscus and ended up having a scope. Uh, another time I was running on an icy road in the winter time and twisted my knee and scope on the other one. So uh, that held up for a while but uh, the wear and tear took its toll over the years as I, as I piled up the miles. Um, so uh, I, I when I uh, had the scopes done back in those days, 20 years ago, the uh, doctor's advice was quit running. Um, they said you shouldn't do that anymore. And uh, I, I, I took that under consideration. I kept running for a little while, but uh, it wasn't going really well. So I finally listened to him and I quit. And uh, I didn't run at all for seven years. Uh, put on a little weight. Um, more than I cared to, uh, was feeling lethargic. Uh, I'd be driving down the road and see uh, people running and I'd want to get out and go with them. And I said, you know, I'm going to start running again. Um, I don't care. I'm going to run until I can. So, uh, so I started doing that and of course, you know, as, as it went on, I, I started to have more problems and uh, over a period of time, two more scopes, you know, clean up the knees, you know, so uh, finally, um, you know, I went to my orthopedist and I, I said, uh, you know, what can I do here? And he said, well, you know, you're just looking at uh, holding on and, and you're going to be a candidate for knee replacement before long. And uh, I really didn't like that diagnosis. So uh, I went to a, uh, another orthopedist at uh, University of Michigan and uh, he uh, echoed this similar diagnosis. So, uh, you know, I've always been one to question authority. Uh, <laughs> don't take no for an answer. I always think there's a better way to do something. 
So I, I started my search on the internet and, and uh, actually uh, the first uh, uh, lead in that I got, I was on an airplane one day and I opened a flight magazine and there was a ad for uh, a clinic in Florida that did PRP. And so I contacted them and you know they had a picture of a before and after of a knee joint and said oh you know we can cure you. And so I contacted them and I talked to them for a while and traded some correspondence. And, but uh, I thought, you know, I need to look further. And so I, I investigated uh, um, microfracture uh, because I knew someone that had had that done and it seemed to work fairly decent for them, but they were a lot younger than me. And I asked my doctor about that and he said, oh, you're definitely not a candidate for that. And so, uh, I asked, uh, um, I looked into uh, cadaver transplants and, and various other things. But along the way, I came across Dr. Wee. And uh, Dr. Wee uh, uh, was, uh, he, he told me about the procedure and um, we, you know, I did the research with him and everything. And, uh, and uh, eventually, I sent him my x rays and my medical records and everything like that. And uh, he uh, said that I looked like a good candidate. And uh, the biggest thing for me was that there didn't appear to be a downside to the procedure. Um, the worst thing that could happen is it wouldn't work. I mean, if it went badly, I mean, I wouldn't be left crippled or, or uh, handicapped or anything like that. So that, that was a big plus for me. And, uh, uh, aside from the cost, because uh, insurance doesn't cover such things yet, and hopefully they will see the light soon, because uh, uh, I think it's going to save them money in the long time, in the long term too. Um, so anyway, I, I end up with uh, with Dr. Wee, um, go through the consultation process, finally make the decision, and take the leap of faith, and I say, okay, let's do this. So I came out here in December 2010. Uh, we arrived, um, my lovely wife Sharon uh, came out with me and we drove uh, for convenience because I knew I'd be on crutches when I left here. And it might be tough traveling on an airplane and it's about a 10 hour drive from home. So we came out and uh, I came into the clinic and they did the measurements with the uh, ultrasound and they marked my knee and the next morning I came in and they uh, drew the blood for the PRP, um, and then I went out and had a nice lunch, and then I got myself mentally prepared for it, and I uh, um, had the surgery, well, the procedure, I guess you'd call it, I don't know that it's surgery, in the afternoon, and uh, it was, uh, I was sedated, but not, uh, not heavily, and uh, local anesthetics, and there were portions of it, I'll admit, were uncomfortable. But all in all, it was pretty quick, and uh, and the recovery. I had to stay out for the weekend, and the uh, the first night was very uncomfortable. But Dr. Wee uh, helped me with that, and he called uh, in the evening to check on me, and uh, I had a good supply of painkillers, so <laughs> uh, that that made that easy to deal with. And and so we had to hang around until Monday morning to uh, uh, do a follow-up exam. And, uh, and then my wife drove home because I was unable to and uh, of course we drove through a blizzard on the way home. Uh, so she did a great job in that. But uh, the rehab was, was fairly intense. Uh, the first two weeks I was on crutches and, uh, and then uh, I progressed to a, um, a knee brace and a cane and I uh, was able to start resuming some of my activities and after about three weeks or four weeks and I started to get in the pool and swim. I started to do spinning on a bicycle although I would do one legged in the beginning and just let my right leg go for the ride. But the motion was good for it and it, it helped loosen things up. But it rapidly started to, uh, to improve and I am fortunate enough to live in Lake Orion, Michigan, which most of you most likely have never heard of, happens to be the home of the Hanson's Distance Project. 
which is an Olympic training program for post-college athletes. And they, uh, they train these athletes, and actually one of their athletes qualified for the Olympic marathon ran it in Beijing, uh, Brian Sell, in 2008. So uh, I've got the company of some pretty elite people there, and one of their graduates, Clint Barron, who once placed 10th at the Boston Marathon, which is pretty significant, is a physical therapist in my town. And so he did my physical therapy, and he has this remarkable device called the Ultra G treadmill. And I was able to start running much earlier than I would have been able to um, otherwise because this treadmill that he has, you suit up into this suit and it inflates and it takes some of your body weight off so the impact is lessened and you're able to run. And so I was able to maintain a level of fitness and start exercising without the impact. And that helped me tremendously. So um, in the course of from December to uh, early March, 90 days is what Dr. Wee uh, told me I couldn't run, no running at all. So, but I was able to use the Ultra G, so that was kind of pseudo running. Um, I started training in early March with my first run, which was a whopping four miles, which for me is not much. You know, I, for some people it's a lot. But uh, in, from the beginning of March to the end of May, I was able to train well enough and complete the Bayshore Marathon up in Traverse City, Michigan. And Marathon, for those of you that I don't know, is 26.2 miles. Okay, so, um, so I felt great. I was not having any knee pain. Um, uh, I was taking it easy. I wasn't pushing the pace. I wasn't uh, hammering out the training miles that I could in the past, but, uh, but it was uh, it was very promising and it only encouraged me because I felt good. I kept adding on and adding on and adding on. So um, I think there's a slide that has uh, some of the events that I completed. In the course of eight months, I went from nine months, I went from not running to doing the Bayshore Marathon, then I competed in a 10 mile race. Uh, the Peterborough Triathlon is a 70.3, that's call, also called a half Ironman, and that's a, uh, a 1.2 mile open water swim, followed by a 56 mile bike, followed by a 13.1 mile run. So that's, that's called the half Ironman. Uh, in, that was in, uh, let's see, that's May, June, July, uh, this, is, this is August. Uh, I did a 300 mile uh, three day bike tour, which was a fundraising event for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Um, in, uh, the, then I, my hometown holds a, uh, a world class event, the Crim, it's a 10 miler, draws the Kenyans, it draws people from all over, and it's a huge event. And I came in 30th in my age group, which doesn't sound like much, but there were 600 people in my age group. So I, I was pretty pleased. Um, this was a uh, bucket list goal here. I completed my first Ironman Wisconsin. Ironman uh, it consists of a 2.4 mile open water swim, followed by a 112 mile bike, followed by a full marathon, 26.2 miles, and you have a 17 hour cutoff. You have to complete that in. So, um, you know, all this is on my new bionic knee. <laughs> and uh, that wasn't enough, so a friend talked me into running another marathon in Illinois in September. And uh, then I came out here and ran the Marine Corps Marathon in October. And then I came into Dr. Wee, since I was in the area, I came in for a checkup the next day. And, and they checked the measurements on my cartilage on my knee and found that out of five measurements, four had increased in the cartilage and, and one was stable. So I, that, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, the Huff was a 50K in December, which is 31 mile trail run. And that was through mud and water and snow. And you know, that was pretty, a pretty good one. And then uh, ran a few more uh, tune-up races to get ready for my next bucket list event, which was in February. 
and I completed the Rocky Raccoon, which is in Texas. It's a 100-mile trail run, and uh, I took a, took a couple weeks off after that one. <laughs> but but all in all, I guess this is just this is just to illustrate. It's not to toot my horn or anything. Uh, it's it's really about Dr. Wee, and it's really about you know what he's done for me. Um, if if I had listened to my other doctors and hadn't kept looking and hadn't found you know his or him and his his organization, um, I would probably not be running, and I would probably be you know, looking forward to a knee replacement one day. So thank you, Dr. Wee. Thank you for having me here. He underwent guided mesenchymal stem cell layering technique at our center. And what this consists of, if you look at what's called a Venn diagram, we have our ingredients that go into this procedure, the mesenchymal stem, stem cells, which we acquire from uh, bone marrow as well as fat. We have growth factors from platelet-rich plasma. We have a matrix of supplied again by fat. And we also have a stabilizing gel, um, which uh, originates with thrombin, human thrombin. What is different uh, about our technique compared with many of the others that you uh, are probably researching is that we use two methods of guidance arthroscopy using a telescope as well as ultrasound guidance and this allows us to induce precise injury at the area at the site where the stem cells are most needed for their growth and so the end result is cartilage growth and repair Obviously, you may not be a marathon runner. But if you're an active individual who wants to stay active and avoid the metal and plastic and potential complications of joint replacement, there is an alternative. You should consider it. If you have any questions or you want more information, just go to our website at www.arthritistreatmentcenter.com. That's www.arthritistreatmentcenter.com. The guided mesenchymal stem cell layering technique is not static. It is constantly evolving, improving so we can provide patients with the best possible results. For more information, go to our website, www.arthritistreatmentcenter.com. I'm Dr. Nathan Way. Thanks for watching.